Well, hello, friends, and welcome to the Million Dollar Message. This is National Sales Director Kristen Sharp coming in from my hometown of Gainesville, Georgia. And today, we're going to talk about selling. You see, wouldn't you agree to grow your business, it's important to master the art of selling. And like any other skills that you develop with practice, selling is truly an art form that you improve on with experience and the more you sell. I always like to say practice makes permanent, which will create a lasting business. And as Mary Kay said, everything happens at your skincare parties and facials. Now, it might just look a little differently since we're doing them virtually, but it's where you'll find your best hostesses, new customers, and potential new team members. In fact, Mary Kay also would say that nothing happens until somebody sells something. So the first tip I want to share with you is to set a sales goal and track it. Set a sales goal and track it. Think to yourself, how much do you want to earn weekly, monthly, yearly with your Mary Kay business? And then what are you going to do with that income? Why is it important to you, and how are you going to track your progress? You know, Mary Kay would say it is very important that you write your goal down and you put it somewhere you see it every single day. I used to write my goals on my bathroom mirror with soap. My goal was to always have 10 skincare parties a week with two new team members. And as I held a party each week, I would mark through it until my week was complete with 10 parties and hopefully two new recruits. (laughs) Isn't that so cute she used to do that? Well, I love that Mary Kay Asher wrote her goals with soap on her bathroom mirror. mirror. And so I challenge you to try it. Maybe you use a dry erase marker like me. But the point here is set a sales goal and track it. You guys, especially with Valentine's Day coming up, we have such an opportunity to connect with people and let them know about the services we have to offer. Now, I want you to think about how many selling appointments it will take to achieve your goal. And the best way to do is just to break that down based on your past averages. So, what is your average FaceTime facial? What is your average online party? It might be different if it's Zoom or if it's a Facebook party. You know, then using Mary Kay's weekly plan sheet, schedule your appointments. How many appointments do you want to hold? And as she would say, plan your work and work your plan because a draft number grows. Next, you want to decide on the type of appointments you want to offer. You know, I'm really loving holding virtual skincare parties over Zoom. Um, Many of them I do send samples to. But most recently, I've been doing Facebook posting parties. And I haven't sent out any samples, but it's done in a private group. I do think it does take a, a hostess that's interactive and sharing her favorite products and, you know, commenting a lot with you. But I'm having a lot of success with that. But The main thing is, you guys, is that I love that we have multiple ways to work our business, multiple ways. Okay, now, here's what I also think is very effective, you guys, is that you have fun themes. And I know for me, we're doing like a a virtual Valentine's Day gift show, and um, I'm excited about that one coming up. A dash out the door look for busy moms and women. You know, it might be a luscious lips party or a valentine glam look a multi-masking party but i think fun themes that are light-hearted and just sound fun are more important now than ever okay all right next you gotta ask you have to ask people are booking more than ever but you have to ask so remember when we would hear objections like i'm too busy or my friends don't live close by or i don't have enough space in my home or I don't have the right type of house, or I don't know if I'm going to be able to find child care. <laughs> well, the blessing is with working virtually, we literally have overcome every objection, <laughs> at least these ones. So ask yourself, who can I ask to book an appointment? Who would be a great hostess? You know, think of all your friends, your family members, your current customers. What about your social media friends? Think of all the groups of people right now that may have not seen each other in a while. Maybe that's a Mary Kay family reunion. (laughs) Well, a reunion, a family reunion that you incorporate Mary Kay in, or um, book clubs, or uh, a Bible study. You know, create an exciting booking script. And, you know, I have found that so much with your booking script, if you can use your voice, whether it's 
your voice through text message or your voice through a voicemail or your voice through Facebook Messenger. I just found that when you use your voice and you're smiling and you're standing and you're excited, oh my gosh, it's so much more powerful than a written out text message. Okay. The other thing I have found is you got to practice, you guys. I know that going live on Facebook or, or doing video chats or even making short little videos to use in your posting party can be a little nerve wracking. But just like anything, you will get better the more you do it. So here's what I have found. It's no different, you guys, from working in person around a kitchen table, except for now we have a screen between us. So I just got a little tripod, set up my phone, and I just started practicing talking into it, making fun little like one- and two-minute um, product tutorials or talking about the features of a product that I love. And I started there. And then I realized, oh, my gosh, actually, this is kind of easier. <laughs> I just talked to the phone. Um, and I'll tell you, the more you do it, the better you get. I also do love how much faster I can do appointments virtually. There's no drive time. There's no setup. I get to work from home. And having a four-year-old with a husband that works extremely long hours and is gone a lot, I always ask myself, oh, my gosh, <laughs> what would I do if I didn't do Mary Kay? Like, this is amazing that I can be paid so well and have such flexibility with being at home with my son. It is such a blessing. So I think, remember, you guys, when you're doing things virtually, keep your camera at eye level because it looks like you're looking in people's eyes when you talk. And I do think good lighting is important. So standing in front of a window where the light is coming onto your face when doing your presentation is key. And if you haven't yet, invest in a ring light. I, I really do think that ring light is worth the money, and there's some great deals on Amazon that really help, especially if you're doing videos or a Zoom or a Facebook Live when it's nighttime. Good lighting in our industry is important, right? You know, the most important thing, you guys, in selling and working virtually is to be authentic and to be you and to have fun. You know, I think telling jokes and even making mistakes and people seeing that you're real is relatable, okay? It's relatable. Now, when doing appointments and when going live, you still need to use a set sheet. You want to have a deal or a seal of a deal, if you call it that, at the end to close people. And so I still would recommend using a set sheet. You can mail it, email it, post it, text it, but you want to do an online table close, as well as you want to do individual consultations, just like if you were going to close one-on-one -on -one at an in-home party. Now, if this could be a quick conversation that you do on FaceTime video chat, or um, a friend just told me that she creates rooms on Zoom, and people wait to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation with her um, through utilizing Zoom in the different rooms. So I think the key thing is just figuring out how you're going to do that. Many times at my parties, I'm like, okay, Lisa, I'm going to call you first, okay? Oh, Sam, you said you have to put your son to bed. Okay, do you want me to call you in 45 minutes or do you want me to call you tomorrow morning? Like, literally, it's very organic, but it's, I'm setting an appointment of when we're going to connect by phone or by FaceTime to close the party. All right, you guys, the main thing with selling is to not overcomplicate it. Remember, you using the products is key, and you having enthusiasm and authenticity. So remember, you are your best customer. And so I hope you are using Mary Kay head to toe. It's really hard to talk about a product that you're not personally using. And for those of you, for example, that haven't used the retinol set, I will tell you, there's one thing to show other people's before and after photos. There's a whole other thing when you know what a difference that retinol set has made with your skin. I will tell you, it makes all the difference. And the same is true as you're sharing products. And so the more you can use and you can share authentically, the more success you are going to have. Now, the other tip with selling, you guys, is following up. When a customer does purchase a product, I make sure – to put her in my two plus two plus two system. I contact her in two days of having the product just to make sure she's loving it and it's working. Two weeks to follow up and check to make sure that it's getting the results, she's getting the results that she wants, and two months for her refill. 
And you can set a reminder in your calendar, in your smartphone, or, of course, in my customers. Um, But the key is following up. Fortune is in the follow-up. So just know, whether someone books or not, whether someone buys or not, I always follow up. And I just made the decision early on in my career to be the queen of follow-up. And you guys, it has served me well. I love this stat from the National Sales Executive Association. And these, these stats just blew my mind, so I want to share it with you. 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and then stop. 25% of people make a second contact and stop. 12% of salespeople only make three contacts and then stop. And only 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. But get this. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on the second contact. 5% of sales are made on the third contact. 10% of sales are made on the fourth contact. And get this. 80% of sales are made on the fifth to the twelfth contact. You guys, these stats taught me that I need to track and that every prospect is getting at least five to twelve contacts from me. That could look like a happy birthday message, a quick text to say, I'm thinking of you. It could be a call inviting them to the next virtual guest event. It could be calling them to ask them to give me their opinion of a new product line we launched or to ask them to be a part of my product test panel. Or I might have noticed that her son um, got engaged on Facebook and just wanted to let her know how excited I was for her. You get the idea. Follow-up makes a difference. A customer doesn't care how much you know until she knows how much you care. Success in selling and building relationships is follow-up. And, you guys, this leads me to having that personal touch. You know, I keep notes on my customers, but you can also keep notes um, in a binder, in your smartphone, on Mary Kay in touch, in the My Customers app. I mean, I just keep a record and list things out about my customers. And again, I think I talked about this last week, it is so key to know her husband's name, the kids' names, her birthday, her anniversary, products on her wish list, products that she tried that she didn't like, <laughs> so I don't offer those things to her again. Her skin type, anything and everything about her that I know or find out about her so I can remember and reference in the future. Remember, we are someone's personal beauty consultant, and in order to consult on beauty and make it personal, we need to remember these details. All right, Mary Kay Ash said, ours is a business. We're selling results from truly a personal one-on-one relationship and friendship, an outstanding sales results and the ability to think from the customer's point of view understanding, and responding to the customer's best interest. You can master the art of selling. Practice makes permanent. And know that selling is just the beginning of working our business full circle. Focus on the people and your personal connection with them, and the results will come over time. So, to review, set a sales goal and track it. Decide on the type of appointments that you want to offer. Ask for the booking. Practice your presentation. Use a set sheet. Have some deals and steals to close at the end. And close one-on-one. Have systems for follow-up. And be intentional about giving a personal touch. You guys, the blessing from this pandemic and working virtually is that you can fit more people on screen than you could ever possibly fit around a kitchen table. And the more frequently you hold skincare parties, the more products you sell, the more money and loyal customers you will gain, the more referrals you will obtain, and the more people you will be in front of to rebook and share our amazing opportunity with. You guys, embrace the change, and I promise you and your business will thank you. And remember, nothing happens until we sell something. This is National Sales Director Kristen Sharp signing off. Make today a day that counts.